The following information is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect those of a rude awakening international nor this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter, a rude awakening international, nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result. The job of a pharmacist is to dispense pharmaceuticals, drugs. But that job description is an outdated 20th century concept. The methods of a 21st century pharmacist call for a completely different prescription, one that gets you off the drugs. So says our guest today, author and pharmacist Billy Weeks, who's about to give you a health awakening. Welcome to The Health Awakening. I'm your host, Scott Laird. When is the last time a pharmacist tried to help you get off the drugs he or she was dispensing? Or told you that the drugs are only meant to be a temporary solution, like stitches or a band-aid, until the problem can be corrected through a drug-free modification to your diet and lifestyle? Well, this is exactly what all pharmacists should be doing. According to our guest today, pharmacist and author of a brand new book called The 21st Century Pharmacist. Please welcome Billy Weiss. Billy, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me, Scott. Certainly. Now, The 21st Century Pharmacist, this sounds something of a, of a personal nature. Did you become the 21st Century Pharmacist? If so, how did that happen? Yes, yeah, Scott, I really believe that I did. And it really happened. When I was 14, I decided I wanted to become a pharmacist. And I decided I wanted to do that because I wanted to help people get well. And that was the concept that I had in my mind at that time of pharmacist. After I graduated from pharmacy school and went to work, I so soon discovered that I didn't feel like I was helping anybody really get well, just really maintained on prescription drugs. And so it led me to go get further education in compounding uh, customized medications for folks. I earned an advanced fellowship in metabolic and nutritional medicine. And that's where I really learned what I believe is the 21st century concept, yeah. where we actually help people the learn what creates their disease process or their problems or their issues, and how do we use diet, nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, rest and recovery, uh, the right supplements to make this um, make the body take care of itself. Gotcha. And in most cases, we see that the body is able to do amazing things the way God created it. I think that we get in the way with the things that we do um, you know, with as the choices pharmacists? that we make. Okay. Yeah, as, 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 well, not so much as pharmacists, but just as general population, the choices that we make, the, mm -hmm. the branding that we're taught, the, the commercialization of food, and uh, just all the things for convenience, mm -hmm. and we sacrifice our own health by doing those things. So we get in the way of our own progress. Really. I think so. And we're yes, shooting sir. ourselves in the foot. Yes. Okay, well, what does it mean then to be a 21st century pharmacist? If you were to train someone else, this is how you be a 21st century pharmacist. Yeah, Scott, so the first thing that, you know, in pharmacy school and in, in medical school, we don't really have any training on nutrition, diet, lifestyle, any of those things. It's really just about disease processes and drugs to help alleviate some of those symptoms. Hmm. And so the 21st century pharmacist really needs to understand what drug interactions are, what drug nutrient depletions are, what just general nutrient depletions are, and how the body works, the physiology of the way the body really works, and what's going on when somebody has diabetes, or what's really going on when somebody has high blood pressure, or any of these diseases that we see today. And how do we help the body correct those things by making the right choices. And so it's really a concept of your opening was to help people learn how to be able to minimize or eliminate their prescription drugs. Of course, always working with their physician as a 21st century pharmacist. I believe a big part of it is to be an extension to the physician and to be an extension to the patient to help bring everything together for the greater good 
of that patient and their health. Do you, you think that a lot of pharmacists got into that rut that you did that, yeah, I want to help people, and then you get into the daily grind of you're just putting prescriptions and counting them out and put them, putting them in the, in, the, in the pill bottle and that's it? Absolutely, Scott. I mean, it's the way the system is designed. It's what happens. It's what we're trained to do in school. My wife's mm -hmm. also a pharmacist, and that's what we're trained to do. It just was not meeting what my goals were to help people get well. It wasn't what I wanted for my family. It wasn't what I wanted for the, the people who were coming in to see me on a daily, a weekly, or a monthly basis. And so, yeah, it's very difficult. And I, I think that unless a pharmacist thinks, we'll call it outside the box, mm -hmm. that it's very hard to get out of that rut and that routine that, that most pharmacists are in today. Do you think a lot of them just secretly want to help people more? They're, they're going through going, you know what? And they come to the same realization that you did that this just isn't working. It's, this isn't helping anyone. I think they do. And I think a lot of that problem is education, though, again, it's not taught in the schools. So mm. while we may want to help as pharmacists, we may not know what to do if we're not given any instructions on vitamins and minerals and rest and recovery and exercise and what all those mean based on science, what foods really make a difference and not what the food pyramid says. Mm -hmm. It's very tough to understand or to teach people to understand those things if you don't know them yourself. You know, I've heard that from other <clears throat> physicians and, and just in the, uh, the natural health realm. Uh, you know, and you hear these things, you're never sure if it's, a, if it's a myth or not, that there's very little nutritional training in med school, and, and you're, you've gone through it, so, and you say, they're literally, yes, there's, there's, no med, there's no training in nutrition. Well, I can tell you, Scott, as, as somebody who's graduated from pharmacy school 27 years ago now, I just hired a pharmacist, Cole Moore, mm -hmm. who just graduated in 2016 from pharmacy school. He had no more nutritional training than I did. And I just think that that's a travesty today wow. with all the things that we know and with all the new information that's out there about using vitamins and minerals and foods to help our bodies heal themselves. It's just, it's crazy that it's not taught. So mm -hmm. he did an internship with me and was blown away by what I was doing. And he said, where did this come from? That's not what a pharmacist <laughs> does. So, and I'm actually working with a couple of pharmacy schools to hopefully make this a part of their curriculums. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Uh, to teach the OptiLife program, the wellness aspect of what a pharmacist should do, the 21st century concept. Right. Uh, they're very open to it, um, so we're talking about making that happen. Wow, that is excellent. Okay, we're talking with our guest today, Billy Weiss, about how to be a 21st century pharmacist. Uh, and we're gonna help you get off your drugs and get back onto health. We're gonna take a short break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Michael Rood's Message of Truth is broadcast all over the world. But none of it happens without the monthly financial support of our Ambassador Club members. And right now, membership has more benefits than ever. I'm giving into a ministry that is helping to feed other people that have the same hunger that I do. The Ambassador Club stands out to me because Michael brings it forth with such zeal and life and truth. Who in the world else you gonna give to to get the truth out? and to share it with the world. The Ambassador Club, we were given the opportunity on a monthly basis to know that we are giving our funds to a purpose that would make a difference, not only in our lives, but those around about us and in our world. We're an ambassador because we, we feel like we're helping the world in a small way. And we feel so blessed that we could be a part of that. Join now and Michael Rood will send you the Ambassador Club Welcome Kit, an exclusive messenger bag stocked with teaching DVDs, Red Sea Crossing cards to spread the word, and more. You'll also receive ambassador-only bonus gifts whenever you make a separate donation to receive the monthly love gift from Arood Awakening International. Best of all, you'll get ambassador-only sale prices in our online bookstore several times throughout the year. Plus, exclusive invitations to Ambassador Club functions at Arood Awakening events. Join the Ambassador Club right now. All it takes is a modest commitment of $100 per month or an annual gift of $1,200. We'll send your welcome kit right away and you can start enjoying your love gift bonus items immediately. 
Call now or visit the Arood Awakening website to join the Ambassador Club. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. Uh, before the break, we were talking with our guest, Billy Weiss, about what it means to be a 21st century pharmacist. Uh, getting out of the old way of doing things and getting back into what does it really mean to be healthy and how can health practitioners help people do that? Uh, and Billy, before the break, we were talking about uh, nutrient depletion. We touched on it a little bit. Uh, we always see these commercials on television where a certain drug can cause death or this or that or the other thing, the really scary side effects. But we are never told that this same drug can deplete your body of certain minerals, and that in itself can be dangerous. So what are some common uh, depletions that drugs would cause? Yeah, some of the most common ones are like the drugs for um, the stomach upset, for the antacids, the purple pills, those mm -hmm. kind of things. And they deplete our body of magnesium, and they can start to deplete our body of B vitamins, and so mm. vitamin D. And so all these things are extremely important. And it's not that those drugs are necessarily bad or you shouldn't use them. It's just that you should replace the nutrients that that is taking out, the vitamins and minerals that that is causing us to either not absorb or mm. not produce as well or block some of those things. So it's easy to correct that. But again, in pharmacy school, we're just not taught it, Scott. And so it's mm. very hard to know that. The, the physicians aren't taught it. So... It's just not common knowledge today, unfortunately. So what's the domino effect of that? If, if pharmacists don't know that these <laughs> drugs are going to cause these depletions, and all of a sudden the person comes back and says, I've got different symptoms now, well, would the doctor then go, okay, well then you need this thing to, to uh, offset what's happening over there with the first drug? I think you just named, you said the domino effect. Mm. We, we take the side effects from one drug in many cases, and then we end up on another drug, and that ends up, causing more symptoms and we end up on a third drug. The average senior is on seven or more drugs today. And so we just have to look at that and when we know the side effects of the drugs, many caused by these nutrient drug nutrient depletions that we're discussing, it's no wonder that we just have a system that seems to not work well at this point. So that, that is really then uh, maybe the cause of, of some of these other uh, prescriptions is just depletions of, of minerals that were not uh, picked up on, that the, that the physician or, or and or the pharmacist didn't stop and think, wait a minute, maybe that's because this and this is happening. It's certainly a contributing factor at this point, Scott, and I think mm -hmm. all the evidence and all the research leads to that. I mean, there's no question. I have lots of um, uh, references in my book to these things and how that works and, and why it's, it's just, again, in the 21st century, I don't think it should be that way in a modern society like ours. Right. Now, speaking of a modern society, we've got all kinds of stresses on our body and we don't eat the way we should. Uh, obviously, these things are causing depletions of certain uh, nutrients in our, in our bodies as well. Uh, so aside from the drugs, what are some other common uh, nutrient depletions that you see in, in people's bodies that even if they're not on meds. Yeah, it happens all the time. Of course, as we age, that can happen. As we have different disease processes, stress, you mentioned, not sleeping well, not eating well. But some of the more, probably the most common is magnesium. Mm -hmm. At the age of 24, most folks are already magnesium deficient. And magnesium has over 300 positive functions in our body. And so we have to look at replacing those kind of things. Magnesium is tremendous for sleep, uh, prevents our muscles from cramping, it helps regulate heartbeat. I mean, it helps the body uh, uptake glucose or sugar mm. and insulin. I mean, all these functions that are extremely important. It helps produce energy, it helps the brain work. And if, you know, at the age of 24, most of us are already deficient. It's a simple, easy, inexpensive fix when we use the right forms of magnesium that will actually penetrate the red blood cells and, and do the trick. And so it's a simple fix to something that could be causing migraine headaches, could be a magnesium deficiency. Sli restless legs, magnesium deficiency could be the cause. Not sleeping, magnesium deficiency is often the cause. Mm. So we can take what seems to be complicated problems and simplify it with Magnesium. Now, is that, speaking of what you mentioned, uh, muscle cramps when, when you're sleeping, mm -hmm. is that the same thing that's happening to football players when they come off the field and they, they cramp mm -hmm. up? I mean, we often attribute that to dehydration, but really at the root cause, is that magnesium? Yeah, it's, like, it's definitely going to be an imbalance of magnesium in mm -hmm. most cases. Sometimes potassium is an issue, and that's what we always typically hear. 
but most of the time it's actually a magnesium deficiency. So their electrolytes are out of balance. Their right. nutrition is missing something somewhere. But Gatorade is not necessarily the... <laughs> it's probably not the best way to do it today. Correct. That's All right. correct. Okay, well, uh, you mentioned that, that, that drugs are meant to be a temporary measure. Uh, in your book, like stitches or a bandage. Uh, is that a reality? I mean, I mean, can people truly get off meds if they've been told that you're just gonna have to take this for the rest of your life? Well, Scott, there are certainly drugs that have saved people's lives, no question. And there are certainly drugs people are gonna be on forever. Take a person who's had a transplant, a kidney transplant, a heart mm. transplant. They're always gonna be on anti-rejection drugs for that. And without them, they wouldn't survive. So those drugs are, are definitely meant for a lifetime. Mm. Most drugs for the chronic diseases that we most commonly see today are not permanent if the person is willing to do the lifestyle changes that we teach in our OptiLife program. And so, yes, while it is very uh, rare in society, it's very common in people who go through my program to have these people off their prescription meds, of course, always working with their physician. But when we can normalize or their body can normalize their blood sugars and their blood pressures and their gut inflammation and their IBS and their Crohn's disease without the use of those side effect laden drugs. And the average prescription drug has 398 side effects. We always get a better outcome if I can use a supplement with no side effects. So we see it very commonly that people are able to work with their physician and discontinue all their prescription medications. So w when someone is, is saying, well, do I have to take supplements? Why can't I just get these from my food? Has our world really changed that much that we need the, the superpower of a, of a supplement? Scott, I really believe that it has. There's four common nutrient deficiencies that we see, and that's the four foundations that I created and formulated. Uh, a multivitamin and mineral, a probiotic, a digestive enzyme, and a magnesium. Today, our food comes from sources not close, typically. Mm -hmm. uh, much of it is processed today. And the soils themselves are actually depleted of a lot of the vitamins and minerals because of the over-farming and the, just the way the world works today. And so while it may be possible, it's going to be very, very rare that somebody could get adequate amounts of vitamins and minerals and the things they need from their food. So I think supplementation is an absolute must today. All right. Well, we're talking with our guest today, Billy Weiss, about what it means to be a 21st century pharmacist. And we're going to talk about what healthcare is going to look like in the future in just a second. Michael Rood's Love Gift Teaching Series, The Ministry of the Messiah, is among his most popular series ever. And now there's a way to ensure you get every new episode every month. Introducing Recurring Love Gift Donations. When you set up a recurring love gift donation of just $100 per month, you'll receive every love gift every month automatically. You'll get Michael's latest teaching in the Ministry of the Messiah series and each month's bonus gift. Plus, as an exclusive extra, you can get any teaching you've missed in the entire series from the first episode to the current episode. This special offer is only for those who set up recurring love gift donations. Call now or visit the Love Gift webpage to set up your recurring love gift donation. Every teaching, every gift, every month. Plus, access to any teaching you've missed along the way. Do it now and never miss out again. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. Before the break, we were talking with our guest, Billy Weiss, about being a 21st century pharmacist and what that means and getting more pharmacists up to speed on what's happening in people's bodies beyond the drugs. So we're going to look at the future of that now with Billy Weiss here. And Billy, what do you see as the future of healthcare? What should this look like? Yeah, Scott, I think it starts with each individual being the CEO of their own health. They have to be proactive. They have to know the things that they need to know. They can't depend on the pharmacy community, the medical community, the nursing community, the nutrition community to tell them what is good. They need to research. That's the reason I'm writing the book. That's the reason that I created the OptiLife RX mm -hmm. program. Because if we don't, I mean, in America, we're going in the wrong direction, it seems, with heart disease and with cancer and with diabetes and with obesity and overweight. I mean, these things are out of control, even in children. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I think when you look in childhood diabetes has increased over a thousand percent in the last decade. And, and we see that one in two Americans now are insulin resistant. I mean, we just see all these problems and nobody is really taking a proactive way to try to create an environment where we don't have all these diseases in America and where we reduce the risk. So the OptiLife program that I've created is based on five simple pillars. God-given quality foods, the world's best nutritional supplements, uh, and that's where I talk about my four foundational supplements, mm -hmm. uh, the right water, the right science-based exercise, and rest and recovery. You've mentioned earlier how busy we are and how stressed we are in America today. And if the body can't recover, it's going to break down. It's no different than our vehicles. When you go to the car lot and you buy a brand new car, that car has all the fluids and all the parts and pieces and all the things that it needs to run efficiently. And over time, you have to have those things checked, right? You have to mm -hmm. have checkups. You have to have oil changes. You have to do these things. And our bodies are no different, but we neglect to do those checkups. We neglect to replace those fluids, and, and I'm talking vitamins and minerals and nutrients and foods and supplements. And so if we can just take that analogy of doing the maintenance on our car and translate it over to doing maintenance on our body before we have one of these chronic diseases, I think we can avoid most of them, and I think research backs that we can avoid probably as much as 90% of the things that we suffer from today. Hmm. Now, you mentioned some of those pillars involve uh, beyond food and what we eat and what we, what we drink with the water. Uh, it's, it's about stress management. And that's one that I think everybody can relate to uh, with just having busy jobs and busy lives and uh, kids in sports. Which we <laughs> incur that with both our, our kids. Yes, sir. They're in sports. So how does someone reduce stress if they can't get out of that, that snare they're in? Well, the number one way that we can reduce stress, believe it or not, is through what we eat and what we drink. One of the biggest stressors, if not the biggest stressor on our body, is actually the food that we take in or the food that we don't take in because that affects our hormones. And when our hormones are out of balance, the stress response goes through the roof. We call it the red zone where the body is in that fight or flight. And it creates a cascade of things that create high blood sugars, high blood pressures, high heart rates, the inability to think clearly, the inability to digest food efficiently. And so it just goes to a situation where we stress our bodies with the foods that we eat often. In addition to the stress of travel and kids and work and just day-to-day -day life. So one of the biggest things that we teach people is we can reduce the stress from our food and water intake. And certain vitamins certainly help the body with stress and with the stress response. So of course that's in the foundational four to help the body cope with these things and to help the body detox and to, to help the body clean up the cells and do the things that the body is really designed to do. I mean, God made the body very simple. Put good things in and we'll get good results. Put bad things in and we get bad results. I think the problem with that is today is nobody really understands what's good. And so oftentimes we're taught things that are, we, they tell us are good when research doesn't back that. So sometimes when people come through my program and we're doing our 12 classes, mm -hmm. they're blown away by some of the things that we say are good for them or some of the things that we say are not good for them because it, it flies in the face of conventional wisdom often. But our results speak for themselves, I think. Yeah, and we've been taught a pyramid of, of certain foods we should keep on that pyramid, but that's not necessarily the pyramid that you would suggest either, is it? I mean, that that's is, kind of backwards. It is absolutely not the pyramid <laughs> that I suggest, and not the pyramid that I teach, and not the pyramid that I live by. Mm. And when we see people, we've had people come off as many as 21 meds and five insulin shots in just a few weeks. Mm by not using the pyramid and by taking the right supplements and doing the things that we teach by following the five pillars. We, we can teach people how to reduce the risk of heart disease, how to reduce the risk of cancer, how to reduce the risk of diabetes. I mean, we do all these things within this OptiLife program. So it's mm. pretty amazing the results that we do see. Wow, and now I meant, you mentioned that you put the good foods in, you got good results out. Uh, and then the part in the middle is one of the pillars as well is exercise. You've got yes. to move. You've got yes. to move the body. Yeah, the body is designed to move. It actually increases our ability to think. It can be as effective as any one antidepressant, as any one blood pressure pill. Mm -hmm. But it's something, again, with our busy lifestyles that it's hard to fit in. 
So we try to teach people practical ways. And with all today's gadgets, with our iPhones, with our watches, with you know, we have all these things that can remind us to get up and move every hour. So we encourage simple things that people can incorporate into their daily lives without a gym membership necessarily or without a lot of time invested and change their health dramatically through their exercise or through their movement, like you said. Mm. All right, well, we're talking with our guest today, Billy Weiss, about the uh, five pillars of the, of the OptiLife RX program, uh, which is detailed in the book, The 21st Century Pharmacist, and we're gonna find out how you can get that book and more details about it in just a minute. The lives of Israeli victims hang critically in the balance following events of terror, violence, and war. But there's another painful problem. Men, women, and children living in poverty. And you can be there for them. Visit us online at thelydiaproject.com. You'll find personal stories from the people who need you and the information you need to make a difference in their lives. When you give to The Lydia Project, you enable us to send help. Emotional and spiritual encouragement are especially needed during these critical days of recovery. Your support enables our ground team in the land of Israel to function as Yehovah intended, providing for the wounded soldiers, widows, orphans, and the poor. Help Israel. Give to The Lydia Project. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. Before the break, we were talking with our guest, Billy Weiss, about being a 21st century pharmacist, something he has transformed himself into and written a book about his experience, The 21st Century Pharmacist. Uh, Billy, what's, what's in this book? We've got the five pillars we mentioned. What are they again? Uh, God-given quality foods, okay. the world's best nutritional supplements, mm -hmm. the right water, science-based exercise, rest and recovery. Okay. Now, what do you consider to be the, the nugget that people are going to be really surprised about or really learn in this book that they're not gonna find anywhere else necessarily? I think just a lack of education within our whole entire medical community on these topics of nutrition and water and food and exercise and rest and recovery is just really not taught, Scott. Mm. I've tried to make this book where it's understandable to the, to the average layman mm -hmm. and where it's scientific enough though with enough references for the doctor, the pharmacist, the medical community to understand and, and get something out of also. And that's my whole thing. As I lecture across the country, sometimes it's to physicians, sometimes it's just to the regular um, you know, consumer. So it can be a vast array of people that I'm speaking with. All right, and we get the book at? OptiLifeRx.com. All right. And we're also, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, social media sites. All right. Well, our guest has been Billy Weiss, the 21st Century Pharmacist. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on another Health Awakening.